and welcome back to Supergirl Tober for our last episode of Supergirl Month. This episode was really the reason we're doing Supergirl Month in the first place. We're coming up on the premiere of the new Supergirl series, and I'm excited about this. This episode itself was leaked several months ago, and for all we know, this will be not be the same thing that we see in the premiere, but I wanted to put this out before the episode so that everyone can decide for themselves whether or not to check out this show. We've seen Helen Slater, we've heard Nicole Tom, we've seen Laura Vandervoort, and now we see Melissa, Melissa Benoist, 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 I think, Benoist. We're just going to go with Benoist, and if we're wrong, sorry Melissa, well, this is our best shot at your name. We'll see her interpretation. This is Supergirl Pilot. Really quick, i got to say, I'm really annoyed by this uh, trend with a lot of TV shows lately that just call their first episode Pilot. Get some imagination. Although I am a little disappointed that the makers of AD, The Bible Continues, great show by the way, didn't name their first episode Pilot. It's spelled like this. That would have been awesome. Oh well. This is Supergirl Pilot. And we begin with, oh wait, this is the Universal logo. 24 years ago, my planet, Krypton, was in serious peril. No, no, that, that's the show. Okay, well at least it's not Sahara. My name is Kara Zor-El. No, Kara. Hello, Kara. Kara, I thought I told you to stay out of trouble. Lana, this is my cousin, Kara. She's always been Kara. You can't change. For no reason. My name is Kara Zorel. Yes, Kara for the planet Krytone. With a K R Y P T M N. Just ask Aang. My name is Ong. Saruman. <laughs> or Bruce Banner. Dr. David Banner. And we begin the episode as we usually do in these things with backstory. You may know his story. Someone please tell Shatner we finally found his toupee. And Supergirl came along, apparently to take care of her cousin. Because why send a full-grown adult to take care of the baby when you can send a 12-year-old? I won't fail kal or you. Also, why put them in different pods? And please note, this ship does not look like a penis. Looks kind of like a beta fish. But not a penis. Yes. No. No. While Kara's flying through space, she somehow runs into the Phantom Zone. Boy, I hate when I accidentally ram into an abstract dimension that doesn't connect with our space whatsoever. She gets stuck there somehow and emerges 24 years later. She lands on Earth, but her now full-grown cousin, who's already exposed himself to the world and is Superman, drops her off with the can the, the Danvers. The, the Danvers. Who are the Danvers? And in the proud tradition of Superman, here are some previous incarnations. Of course, that's Dean Cain, former Superman from Lois and Clark, and Helen Slater, who played Clark's mom, Laura, in Smallville. And having dropped his cousin off at the pound, there's nothing else we need from Superman, so cut to the present. And welcome to... Girly Mundanities. Uh... I need two tickets in the orchestra section for Wicked. No, not from Miss Grant. Her mother wants to see it. Yes, again. Sure, I'll I work at Catco Worldwide Media, an online and print empire built by my boss, Cat Grant, the most powerful woman in National City. In the country of Continentalia, on the planet Galaxia. This is Wynn, Kara's dopey friend who is actually Winslow Shot, the toy man. Let's see whose toy breaks first. <laughs> Looks like 
looking forward to see how that's going to go. But in the meantime, he's the one who believes in aliens and all sorts of weird stuff. I was wondering if maybe you want to, I don't know, go see, go see a movie at night. I, I'm, I can't. I, I'm sorry. I have a date. And in typical rom-com fashion, her best friend is asking her out and she doesn't see it because she's excited she's got a blind date with a stranger tonight. Oh good. E-dating. The only reason I bought this building was because it had a private elevator. That way I don't have to get soaked in cheap cologne every morning getting to my office, find out who used it, have them reprimanded or bathed, I don't care which. Here's your latte. Hot. Oh. That'll be new and different. Meet Cat Grant. <gasps> off screen Kim hates Cat Grant. Every second that this woman is on screen, I want someone to punch her, and no one ever does. Well, to be fair, we might see later episodes where someone punches her. That would be immensely satisfying. Off screen Kim is hooked to watch the show now. And Cat Grant is firing people, like a good TV villain does. Alright, Kim, where would you say we are right now? Metropolis has a person who wears a cape and flies around performing heroic acts. The planet puts this superlative man on their cover 54% of the time. We've passed the auto mechanic and we are moving on. You want to save the trip? Go find me a hero, Kara. Kara. No, honey. It's Kara. If you want to be called Kara, you have to earn Kara. For now, you're Kara. You know, the one time the bitch is right, you correct her. And so Kara goes to meet the new layout guy. He's a handsome strapping man who goes by the name of Jimmy Olsen. No, no, no. And no, this is not about the fact that you made him black. I couldn't care less what color you make him. But you also made Jimmy Olsen cool, and that will not stand. Jimmy Olsen is never cool. And Kara asks Jimmy about Superman, because even though he's taken responsibility by dropping her off at the pound, he's again a deadbeat dad or uncle or cousin or whatever he is. They never seem to want to have Superman step up and take responsibility. It's Superman! Taking responsibility is what he does in his spare time. Kara's foster sister, Alex, drops by and it's time for some girl time! With shoes and boys and dating and kill me! Just kill me! Kill me too. <laughs> Kara really wants to live up to her amazing potential, but her life is kind of lame and ordinary. And Alex is telling her that she should be happy to be lame and ordinary. You always wanted to be normal, right? So having a crappy boss and absolutely nothing to wear, this is what normal looks like. But this giant apartment is not normal. And I went to work for Cat Grant because I thought working in a media company run by a powerful woman who actually shapes the way people think would be the way that I could make a difference. But... Instead, I just fetch layouts and coffee. Um, excuse me? Uh, wasn't there supposed to be some super with this girl? Um, hello? 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 I really hate that man. Check, please. Make sure your number's on. What's this? The date goes badly. I don't care! She watches the news and sees reports that there's a flight in danger. The flight her sister is on. I think we actually are starting to get a story here. Without anything to motivate her more than the love for her sister, Kara gets underway, takes off in the air, and rescues the plane. And this scene is just absolutely perfect. I have nothing bad to say about this scene. Check it out yourself. In keeping with the whole motif that Superman will save a plane when he makes his introduction to the world. She flies away seen by everyone but only recognized by Alex because of the light and darkness and that she's not that remarkable looking. Back at home she's loving all the news reports and people calling her a hero and she deserves to. I love this. Although some people are complaining that she made a mess. Well, you try saving a plane for the first time, see if you don't make a mess. A little clutter never hurt anyone. Alex comes over to bitch her out, Costner style. You exposed yourself to 
to the world. You're out there now, Kara. Everyone will know about you, and you can't take that back. What was I supposed to do? Let you and all those people die? My boat. Um, sorry, technical difficulties, but you know where I was going with that. And Kara goes into the next day at work, fearing what she'll encounter, but no one recognizes her. I like this. This goes back to Christopher Reeves, Clark Kent, and how even though he looked a lot like Superman, you could actually believe no one would think the two are the same person because of how they act. And Kara is so insecure and bumbling, and she's not at all like Christopher Reeve, but she's her own kind of easily overlooked kind of person, and so it's actually believable no one would think she's this person who flew around and caught a plane. And now let's go visit Cat Grant again. <laughs> I know many of you are used to being second best, but it's new to me. Oh, well, we've passed MJ. We're rapidly approaching Wesley Crusher. She wants to exploit Kara for ratings, just like the Daily Planet exploits Superman. Besides fatty foods, there is nothing people love more than a hero. Go get me that girl. And Kara, go get me a lettuce wrap. Oh, that was the new horror level. Nope, she's already past that. Funny. That was the first thing he did. Eat a lettuce wrap? Save a plane, I mean. Hey, that was my own thing I figured out. Don't tell everyone. 